Hi friends. In this video, I would like to discuss about orthosis of shoulder joint. Coming to the orthosis applied to shoulder joint, the most important one is full arm sling. Full arm sling gives ample support and rest with proper protection to the shoulder joint affected. Coming to the fracture at the junction of medial two third and lateral one third of clavicle, fracture at the distal end of clavicle, acromioclavicular joint subluxation, and then the dislocation of shoulder joint, fracture of neck of humerus. In all these conditions, a full arm sling should be applied for ample protection, rest, and elevation. So the basic orthosis which we are applied to shoulder joint is a full arm sling. Hope all of us know how to apply a full arm sling. Please keep in mind the elbow should be tucked into the corner of the sling. This is the basic protocol to be followed in full arm sling or we can apply a triangular bandage or Ulsangi Benda explained by Ashtanga Sangraha. Ulsangi Benda is the 15th bandage, additional bandage from Sutruda. We can apply that Ulsangi Benda or triangular sling as part of immobilization. Coming to the next one is shoulder immobilizer. Shoulder immobilizer is applied mainly in dislocation after the reduction of dislocation for the rest for three weeks for the healing of glenoid labrum and joint capsule we are applying a shoulder immobilizer basically shoulder bandage spica bandage is also equally effective as same as that of shoulder immobilizer in shoulder immobilizer there is one part applied to the affected shoulder like this and then the velcro is applied tightly and the second part is applied around the chest around the chest and then one strap is at the distal end of arm and another is at the distal end of forearm with this immobilization the patient's arm is completely immobilized that the patient is not able to move the arm this gives proper rest compression and protection to the affected joint here you can see one strap is applied at the distal end of forearm near to wrist and another at the distal end of arm near to elbow like this it is applied this is regarding shoulder immobilizer at the time of sitting position and also in lying position at night also during sleeping also patient should wear shoulder immobilizer and patient's elbow is rested on a pillow this is regarding shoulder immobilizer Coming to the next orthosis, it is shoulder support. You can see in this picture, this is shoulder support. Shoulder support should not be applied after a dislocation. Why? Because it does not give ample immobilization as that of shoulder immobilizer. In shoulder support, we are wearing shoulder support to avoid recurrent dislocation. If a patient needs to continue sports activities to prevent simultaneous external rotation and abduction of the affected arm, we are applying a shoulder support to prevent that particular movement. Whenever there is a patient with slap tear and that patient should need to continue the sports activities, we can advise a shoulder support as a preventive measure. And whenever there is acromioclavicular joint sprain, not in subluxation, acromioclavicular joint sprain in such conditions, that means when that particular sports person need overhead activities, that means sometimes in throw activities, Due to the repeated strain, there will be a chance of acromioclavicular joint sprain. In such conditions, we can advise shoulder support. Here we can see the donning of shoulder support. One is rounded through the opposite axilla and then the velcro is applied. And another is over the mid arm. Like this, we are tightening it and the velcro is applied. This is regarding shoulder support. We can advise shoulder support in acromioclavicular joint sprain to prevent recurrent dislocation and also to continue the sports activities. If the patient need to restrict some movements, we can apply shoulder support. The next one is clavicle brace. Clavicle brace is applied to the fracture at the junction of medial two third and lateral one third. Whenever there is fracture at the junction of medial two third and lateral one third, the medial fragment goes upwards due to the pull of stenocleidomastoid and lateral fragment goes downwards due to the pull of pectoralis major. And there will be overlapping and it prevents the fusion or healing of the affected fracture. So that 
to maintain the opposition for the proper healing of fracture we are applying a clavicle brace or figure of eight bandage like this acharya susurda explains sanna munna me sunna makshaka muslena tu tadonnadam pide cha bedniyad gaadam ayavacha sannam unnamey sannam unnamey means the fragment which is went down should be corrected by placing it upward and tadonnadam pide cha the fragment which goes upwards should be corrected by placing it downward that is the reduction method explained by acharya susurda for that particular reduction the chest should be in expanded position for that we are applying clavicle brace and the most important thing regarding clavicle application of clavicle brace is that the clavicle brace should not be too much tight to avoid injury to axillary nerve and vessels so that it should not be too much tight the chest should be in expanded position that is the important thing regarding application of clavicle brace here we can see the application of clavicle brace actually it's a figure of eight bandage here you can see the two parts are placed like this along the two sides and then the chest should be expanded it should not be too much tight which cause injury to the anterior part of the axilla and then the velcro is applied like this please keep in mind it should not be too much tight to avoid injury to axillary nerve and axillary vessels this is regarding clavicle brace coming to the next one it is aeroplane splintage which is applicable in avulsion fracture of greater tuberosity whenever there is fracture of greater tuberosity there will be more chance of avulsion fracture due to the pull of supraspinatus muscle if there is no avulsion then we can do simple immobilization either a shoulder spica bandage or shoulder immobilizer but whenever there is avulsion due to the pull of supraspinatus muscle then the position should be maintained in 90 degree abduction in aeroplane splintage position for the reduction of that displaced fracture and it should be kept for a period of 3 to 4 weeks for the complete healing and then after immobilization rehabilitation is advised this is the aeroplane splintage is used in supraspinatus due to the pull of supraspinatus muscle there will be avulsion fracture to the greater tuberosity and in such conditions aeroplane splintage is applicable hope you understood the most important orthosis applicable to shoulder joint the first one and common one is full arm sling then we discussed about shoulder immobilizer shoulder support clavicle brace and then aeroplane splintage hope you understood the video thank you